What is up, Buck? Doug with Dini in the garage here. Today, I want to wrap up something that I kind of left hanging a few weeks ago. We did a couple videos uh, squawking about oil. I did a video on why you need zinc in your oil if you have an older pushrod vehicle. And then I did a video on using uh, engine treatment to try to clean up a sticky lifter situation. Uh, and I promised everybody that I would let you know uh, how all that went. Here's the situation just to catch you up. You can check out the other videos if you want the full story. This Jeep that I'm in, this 2000 Jeep Cherokee, had a sticky lifter situation. I, I knew it had a sticky lifter because I could hear it first, but then I installed a vacuum gauge and this is what I saw. Oh boy, that's not good. Not supposed to do that at all. That situation would happen on startup. So the motor was cold, there was some kind of gunk uh, built up in the engine that would uh, hang up one of the lifters, and so it was creating a vacuum leak uh, in that cylinder. Uh, then once the engine would warm up, everything would kind of loosen up and it'd go back to uh, running like normal. So I ran uh, engine treatment through my oil. I was gonna do it for like 200 miles. I way overshot the mark and I ran it in there for about 500 miles, uh, but I recommend doing it for a shorter amount of time. And then when I did the oil change, I put in Rotella T5, all right? Um, and like I said, I did a whole bunch of talking about why I did all this stuff, uh, but the proof is in the pudding and the devil's in the details. And today we're gonna talk about how it worked, what the result is. Broad strokes, the result is it was a success, all right? My Jeep no longer does that vacuum leak dipping by uh, 10 inches of mercury every time I do a cold start on it. Um, it still has some of that hydraulic lifter noise, that flat tappet lifter noise that every four liter and, and, and most uh, push rod engines have, but it's not as bad now that I've added the zinc oil. Um, like I said, the engine treatment seems to have cleaned up whatever gunk was in the valve train uh, hanging up that lifter. And so for a relatively small amount of money, I was able to fix a relatively big problem. I, as I mentioned in the other video, the problem with a stuck lifter like that or excessive friction between your camshaft and a flat tappet style lifter is that camshafts are only hardened around the outside. They have a hardened outside shell and the inside is left tempered uh, to add a little bit of flexibility and strength to it. But if you wear through that out protective outside layer, it's like chewing through butter on the inside, you know what I mean? You know, so you will quickly tear a cam lobe right off your uh, cam if you let a problem like that persist. Uh, when I put that video out asserting that, I actually got a few comments of people that said, man, I was watching your video and that's exactly what happened to my Jeep. Uh, there were a couple stories of people who said they had valve noise and eventually it just ate right through the uh, cam lobe and you know, the motor doesn't run if your cams aren't open and your lifters there. Um, I also had a really great response on the zinc video. Lots of people, here's what I originally was gonna do. I was gonna run T4 or T5, uh, Rotella T4, T5. The reason I'm using Rotella, just to backtrack a little bit, I really don't wanna restate everything from those videos, but it's a, a um, uh, heavy duty diesel uh, engine oil that still has zinc in it. Um, I think all Rotellas do, though varying degrees, and what somebody pointed out to me is that T6 actually has the most zinc. So this time I used T5 because that's what I could find in the stores near me, but going forward, I am going to try uh, T6 as it allegedly has more zinc. I think the level of zinc in the Rotella that I use, the T5, definitely quieted down my engine. I mean immediately, the first startup. After doing that oil change, this engine was quieter. And I am certain that if I were to go to back to the GTX high mileage that I was using, not that it's a bad oil, but it doesn't have any zinc in it, uh, I am certain that the first startup after changing, this thing would be uh, loud again. That's how much zinc affects these engines. Um, another suggestion I got from a great viewer overseas, he and I had a long conversation about Miller's oil, which is not something that's very easy to find in the United States, but I guess either all Miller's oil or a specific version of Miller's oil is designed for classic cars uh, and as a result has zinc. All right? Again, as I stated in other videos, all oils used to have zinc. All right? And then they took it out for emissions reasons and kind of left all of us with 20 plus year old engines, you know, uh, left us there holding the bag, wondering what to do to not eat up our cams. So there are classic car engine oils out there. I do want to try this Miller's oil. Uh, it's not 
easy to get in the United States, meaning I can't just go to Advanced Auto or Walmart. So I'm gonna have to buy this online, but I'm gonna give it a shot for sure. That's it, man. This is this is just a quick little reaction video. A lot of people are like, hey man, what's been going on with it? Because it was a few weeks since I posted that. I got busy with some other stuff. Christmas, man. I love Christmas. I love the Christmas season, but it is friggin' hectic. So I uh, just wanted to check in real quick today. I'm actually sitting in the parking lot of the deli where I'm gonna get my lunch. Uh, I figured uh, while I had two minutes while they're making my sandwich, which I would um, uh, clue you guys in, let you know what's been going on. Yes, the engine treatment did work. Um, it did solve that stuck lifter situation. It worked because I nipped it in the bud. I didn't wait for it to be a big problem. I didn't let it persist for a long time. Um, Yes, the zinc oil worked. I already knew that though. I started this because I used to use zinc oil and then I switched and that's when the noise showed up. So I knew the zinc oil was gonna work, but I'd never tried the Rotella. So yes, the Rotella worked. Yes, it's cost efficient. So far, so good. Uh, oil pressure levels are good. Um, noise is way down i think because i had engine treatment in the last oil and then i did an oil change i'm not going to let this oil change go for a full 3000 i'll probably try to do 1000 to 1500 and then do a quick oil change just to get a little bit more sludge out any residual uh, engine treatment that's still in there because that does affect the viscosity especially uh, this time of year in the winter um i like my oil to be you know right right where it's supposed to be um and that's about it. Uh, the, the suggestions and the comments that I got from you guys on the last two videos about the engine treatment and the zinc oil additives and everything were incredible. I learned a ton. I got a ton of good suggestions. Keep them coming. If you have anything else uh, that you know for a four liter in specific or any older engines uh, to help us keep these darn things on the road, I would love to know because then I can share it back with, with the rest of the viewers here. That's the whole point of this channel. Uh, let's try to spread some knowledge out there. So leave me the comment down there in the squawk boxes. Let me know what you think about my findings and I'd love to know your findings as well. I'm not going to make this quick update any longer than it needs to be. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Oh my God. I got my sandwich, right? And I'm coming out of the deli and there's a guy in a slammed VW. I don't know, whatever turd wagon he's driving. And it slammed all the way to the ground. The wheels are all cambered out to the side. He starts it up. It sounds like a broken lawnmower, but what's even funnier is it smelled like a lawnmower. You know what I mean? You know how a lawnmower smells? Like a crappy little Honda four-stroke uh, lawnmower. And I laughed. I couldn't help but visibly laugh. And I guess he saw me and he rolls his window down and starts screaming at me, calling my Jeep a PC. You know what? <laughs> and I couldn't stop laughing. He looked friggin' ridiculous. This was a grown man who had paid good money to break his suspension, screw up his exhaust, and his motor had to just hate him. I don't know what friggin' Chinese eBay uh, mods he'd done to that poor motor to make it smell like that, but uh, it was not... It was not a good thing and uh, I don't know, I figured I'd share that with you guys. No offense if you're a VW driver, I guess, but <laughs> God, the stuff people do to vehicles. I don't know, maybe I'll look at my Jeep and say the same thing, who knows. Uh, all I know is for all, the, for all the beat up this thing is, it sure as hell doesn't smell like a friggin' lawnmower, that's for sure.